Hey there, Trader Tim from Emini Mind, and I'm doing a trade recap here. It's Thursday, the 12th of January. I wanted to run through my trades for the week thus far. Uh, it's a little bit earlier in the day than I would normally do the videos, but um, I'm going to go uh, go off for a bike right here. So I wanted to get the video uh, put together and put out. So uh, I wanted to run through my ES trades for the week, and I made I made a little bit of a mistake today. I wanted to run through that, and I'll talk about the 15-minute opening range breakout as well. Um, so let's... Let's start with the 15 minute and then we'll go to the, the retracement trades. So Monday, if we go back to, I'll pull up the daily chart just so you can get a quick refresher. So here is Monday the 9th, pull up my trade log. Uh, Monday the 9th was this uh, inverted, not really inverted hammer, but uh, we rallied, we came up to the 50% retracement and then we sold off and closed bearish. And I actually put on a, uh, a put hedge um, when we came up to that 50%, um, it's a little bit early because the Fed meeting isn't until the end of the month, but um, I do have that on. If we rally today and close either today or tomorrow above this 61.8, I'll just close it out. It ended up being a really small position, and I bought out fairly far in the SPY um, just because I it was early in the year, and it, it was a little bit early to hedge the Fed meeting itself, but I figured, well, if we get a run down into the Fed meeting, then I could capitalize on that move. So um, have that going, and then on the 15-minute chart, Monday was a 20-pointer, um, a, a and that was here on the 9th. You can see the first 15-minute bar. We broke above the first 15-minute candles high, and that went for a quick 20 points. Tuesday, we filled the gap. And when I say fill the gap, I mean, look at this first 15-minute candle. Here's the transition from this little red candle is Monday, the last uh, bar on Monday, the settlement bar. This green candle is the first candle on Tuesday. And we filled the gap, meaning we traded at Monday's close on Tuesday morning in the first 15 minutes. And so there's no trade. And look what happened. We dipped below the first 15 minute and then it came back and it would have stopped you out so that's a really good way to stay out of a lot of stop outs when the market is more likely to go sideways when we fill the gap so no trade there Wednesday we moved sideways for quite a while basically all morning and then we dipped below broke to the downside didn't quite fill the gap and then turned around so that one ended up stopping me out um, I had a couple folks asking about is it worth taking trades in the other direction so, like, if this broke to the downside and stopped me out, is it worth taking the long and the other end? Um, this one, in particular, would have got you a plus 20 uh, to, the, to the long side if you flipped it. Uh, I don't have data going back, you know, for the last couple of years. I, I suppose I could go back and, and take a look at those. Uh, or, if you know, if you want to go through your, your trades and look at the other end, if, if the trade initially broke short and then stopped you out, what would happen if you would go long? Um, so I don't have any conclusive data on that, but it was just an interesting idea brought up by another trader, a couple of traders actually. And then today, another open that we filled the gap in the first 15 minutes, and look what happened. It's been a sideways day. We broke below the low of the first 15-minute bar. Then we broke above the high by a couple of ticks. So, you know, it's nice to eliminate stopouts uh, as best you can. And this is a really easy way to do that. Just not take the 15-minute opening range breakout when you fill the gap. So that's that set up for the week. And then if we go to uh, Monday, I didn't have any retracement trades. Tuesday, we did the um, live session. And that was a really, really choppy session. You can, If I put the 30-minute range on, 30-minute high and low, it was like that. And same deal. We came below and above the 30 minute range and really did not do a whole lot of anything in the middle of that range. Uh, Wednesday, much better day, and I ended up with two trades and they were both winners. So the first one was a little counter trend, so a short at highs. If I go back 11th and the open. So it was here. See how we made this double top? Let me link these charts up. Here's the high on the five minute. These two bars have the same high. On the 512 tick chart, it looks like this. You have the dip in between. 
and we came down, we broke the swing low. This was a high tick, uh, I believe, as well. Maybe it was this one, 43, and uh, it was the high of the day, double top, came down, uh, and then traded at 63.50. That was the short. I ended up trailing the extension down and was taken out uh, just above uh, 59. And then on the other end, at uh, 8.44, these are mountain time, we came down and we broke lows by a tick. Here, a couple of ticks. And uh, had a low tick of the day. And we came up, we broke. I didn't take, I waited for us to break this swing high here. Okay, so I didn't take this first one, the first long like that. A lot of times if you come up and you don't break the swing high, you could easily just roll over. So I took it like this. And that long trailed up to the, uh, traded up to the negative 23, drew the next retracement, and didn't end up getting a huge move, but was able to trail it up underneath this 57 here before we rolled over and um, dipped below again, and then we're back up in the 30-minute range. So really a lot of chop all week, and so you know that's reflected in the number of trades that I end up having and the size of those trades. Um, and then today, I kind of made a little goof, and the breath has been very flat this week, one to one for the for the most part. Um, and anytime we're within two, so right now it's 1.8. Anytime we're within two to one, whether it's plus or minus, you have a very good chance of being sideways, being range bound, staying within the 30 minute range. And anytime you go to the extremes, highs or lows of the day, you have a good chance of retracing back to the middle of the range. And so. There was a little short at the halfway back of the day, so just drawing from highs to low. And remember, we filled the gap, so that's also an indication that we may just move sideways today. And so we did break the swing low here. This is right at the 50% retracement. Um, I drew up the retracement short, and I did the 77.50 short. Um, the mistake was, you know, we're, we're in the middle of the range with that one-to-one -one breath. And probably could have just, um, you know, sat on my hands all morning instead of taking that one. Ended up, you know, stopping me out. Not a huge deal, but, um, you know, looking back on it, that one-to-one -one breath, that's been the sign all week to sit on hands. And we talked about this very thing in the Tuesday session. A lot of times, the patterns that you see on Monday and Tuesday end up repeating themselves throughout the rest of the week. And so when you have a choppy early morning Tuesday session with not a lot to do, there's a good chance that the rest of the week can mimic that until you have some kind of larger breakout on the daily chart. And today, or on the daily chart, our sort of line in the sand has been this 61.8 uh, above us, which is just above 4,000. We have not broken that yet. So even though we're moving higher this week, we're still the, the daily bars themselves, at least a lot of the morning session, has been um, has been sideways and choppy. And on the daily chart, that is reflected by you know a candle that's red followed by a candle that's green, and the bodies are about the same size. So on Monday you sold off, on Tuesday you took it all back. Yesterday um, we we rallied, and then today temporarily we had we had the gap up, and then we sold off. And the intraday chart, you know, this first candle gave back a lot of what we made yesterday. And then now we're just, you know, basically inside the 30-minute range for all the sessions. So anytime this 30-minute range, you're sitting inside of it, you want to be much more conservative and lean on sitting on your hands versus over trading. That way you won't have a whole bunch of, trades that you wish you didn't take, a whole bunch of unnecessary stopouts, and then come next week, let's say there's a couple of good trades right off the bat, instead of putting you, you know, in the positive for the month, you're only making back what you lost last week and you're just kind of in this break even treading water. So if you can really focus on trading, executing your trades consistently and staying in your winning trades as long as possible, and then minimizing any mistakes and be very observant and lean towards trading less, you can get, you know, kind of push past that break even 
trading mark and get to uh, you know, more state of profitability. So if you have uh, any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. I hope you all have a great weekend, and I'll talk to you soon.